thought it was very clever and hilarious. This is not the title of her speech. Please welcome Tiffany Miller with her speech, Disruptors, Disruptors, <laughs> Tiffany Miller. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. We are living in some exciting times right now, and I'm not, I'm not talking about politics. <laughs> I'm actually talking about technology and how technology is just ingrained in our everyday lives and it's changing our day to day. And I'm not talking about mobile. I'm not, I mean, we've talked about mobile phones. All of you have a mobile phone, right? I'm not talking about Facebook or Snapchat. I'm talking about the next cool stuff that's coming out, which is really around artificial intelligence, which is just a fancy way of saying, all that data I've been collecting on you, I'm gonna use it and help you make decisions. Actually, I'm gonna automate those decisions and I'm gonna predict the things that you're thinking you need. And the second piece, is smart devices, also known as the internet of things in your, if you're in this space. Smart devices are the Fitbits of the world, the things that are connected to the cloud, that are, con that are collecting data on your habits, your purchasing habits, your fitness habits. It's Alexa, you know, anybody have Alexa? I love Alexa, I'm waiting for Alexa to love me back. <laughs> it's not happening yet. But I'm also waiting for Alexa to actually predict my needs versus just respond to me about the weather. Now in my job, I have the cool opportunity of working with companies to help them integrate technology into their business and get closer to their customers in a more meaningful way. So I thought today I would just share my point of view more specifically on the retail industry, apparel, and what trends we're seeing and where I think it's going as it relates to technology. Now in the retail space, clearly the disruptors are the e-commerce solutions. These are the guys that you might have heard of like Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is a subscription-based solution that, you know, I'm not a fashionista by any means. I love the thought of just get to know me, tell me what I need, and then I'll just keep purchasing from you. That's Stitch Fix. You all know about Amazon. That's clearly the biggest disruptor in this space. According to the World Economic Forum, today, 10% of retail dollars are being spent in stores. But just nine years from now, 40% of that is gonna be on e-commerce solutions. I'm sorry, I flipped that. <coughs> I flipped, clearly I flipped that. 10% is e-commerce, and in just nine years, it's gonna be 40%. That's huge change in growth, huge. And we're seeing that today. Actually, Macy's just announced this month, unfortunately, they're closing 60 stores across the nation, and they're gonna close another 30 in the next few years. So we're seeing that change. But I'm here to say, the store is not dead. <laughs> Going to the store is gonna live on. <laughs> and here's why. Here's what needs to happen. These traditional retailers, they have a leg up to the instance that they have the retail outlets already, they have the physical location, they also have a brand that everybody knows. You know Nordstrom, you kind of have a, a relationship with Nordstrom, you know good quality, you know they're gonna be on brand, they're gonna be um, on trend. And I also say the store matters because you can also watch the trend of the e-commerce players trying to open locations, right? Amazon's trying to open stores, Warby Parker's trying to open stores. So the store matters. But for this talk, given the time, because I can go on and on about this topic, I'm gonna just focus on getting those traditional retailers to win against the e-commerce players. I'm in it for those guys. Now, but what is their challenge? They've got two main challenges. There's several challenges, but the two main challenges that I've seen in talking to the customers that I've been relate, uh, working with is one, they're not aware or they're not admitting that this change is happening. So Nordstrom, for instance, in their <coughs> financial reports, admitted that they saw this trend of technology a few years ago, but they thought it would take longer. And they, they, they're behind now. 
they're behind because they said, oh, mobile, social, whatever, it's coming, it's coming, but I've got time. And they fell behind. Now, as a consumer, you've got all the data you want, you've got all these choices, you get what you want when you want it, and you expect that Nordstrom is gonna deliver whatever you want when you want it. They fell a little bit behind. Retailers have to get with the times and recognize that this is a shift they have to embrace. The second piece is when I was talking about all that data, it's cool, retailers are collecting all this data about you, but they're not using it. According to sale, a Salesforce study, companies are actually only using 1% of the data that, less than 1% of the data that they're collecting. Less than 1% of all that cool stuff they know about you, they're actually using. Which means they're not building a, a connection that matters to you. This is simply, you see a Facebook ad for diapers and you're a dink, you're never gonna have kids, why am I seeing an uh, ad for diapers? <laughs> That's an example, right? So, imagine that you're shopping at Nordstrom's. Okay, I go to Nordstrom and I expect it's going to be a quality experience. It'll be good. It's not going to knock my socks off, but the sales associate's going to be friendly. They're going to help. They're going to help me find what I need. But imagine if Nordstrom was actually using the data that they had on me, and I could walk in, and the sales associate could pull up my style profile. Tiffany, what are you shopping for today? Well, I have a hot date with my husband on Friday, but oh, you know that sweater that you bought at Topshop last month? We've got a cool new skirt, accessories. Okay, you get the picture. Imagine, I don't have to explain to that associate that my style is pretty classic. I can't, you know, I can't do the trendy stuff. I'm a little more conservative. I can't do the off-the-shoulder cool trendy stuff. Um, so imagine that, but let me take it to the next level. Does anybody remember the Jetsons? Mm -hmm. Yay! I was afraid I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> so the, the Jetsons was this really cool cartoon back in the day. Um, it actually aired um, in the 60s. I grew up watching it in the later 70s. But it was this family that was growing up in the future. They had the cars and the air and all of that. But Jane Jetson had this super cool closet. She could go up to the screen and she can say, I'm going to go out with my friends on Friday. And she could just flip through the screen and she could see what the outfit was gonna look like on her. Guys, that's happening today. <laughs> Burberry, connected store, go visit it. I, the device, remember I talked about the smart device? Imagine the smart device is this coat or that purse. And I walk up to the mirror in the store, I can see that, that product live <laughs> on the runway, on me, different colors in real life. The Jetsons are here, <laughs> and it's super exciting times, and I just hope that you'll join me in watching this trend of disruptors and watching the traditional e-commerce, I mean the traditional retailers fight with these e-commerce guys, and let's see who wins in nine years. Thanks, guys.